I'll just say this, even though I, I think a lot of people will poo-poo it and, and, and roll their eyes and so on. No builder wants to build buildings that collapse. It's just, again, a sense of pride. Nobody builds buildings in order to kill people. Nobody enjoys, uh, very few people, very, very few people in, luckily in our world, enjoy killing people. Do things that are unsafe on purpose, to endangering lots of people. I mean, it happens. And again, bad stuff happens and there's no way to eliminate it. Bad people exist. There's no way to eliminate them through government coercion or through the marketplace. Some bad does exist. But at the core, people are not like that. Most people are not like that. So most of it doesn't happen. What else? Well, buildings have to buy insurance, should buy insurance. I wouldn't buy a, con I wouldn't buy a condo in a building that didn't have insurance, that wasn't covered by insurance. Insurance companies would have a huge incentive to send in uh, uh, inspectors on a regular basis every time an insurance policy was renewed maybe every five years, every three years or whatever, and a coastal area where there is coercion, where there is more deterioration, they would have an incentive to send it in more frequently. Again, insurance company doesn't want to lose money. Doesn't want to lose money. And depending on how the policy is written, it has a huge incentive to get, to, to warn the, the, the owners of the building that these things are problematic and if these things happen the insurers won't cover them because it's the responsibility of the building owner to fix the problem and i trust this is another point i trust the insurance inspector much more than i trust i've talked about this with food much more than i trust the government inspector what's going to happen if the government inspector gets it wrong what what is going to happen in seaside or whatever to the government inspector who said this isn't that big of a deal i mean maybe he'll lose his particular job you could probably go and work for another, another government agency. But it's pretty rare that inspectors lose their jobs. Maybe because this got a lot of press, he will. But every time there's a, 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 an outbreak of food stuff, does somebody at the FDA lose their job? Every time a drug uh, turns out to be not as good as the FDA says it is, does somebody at the FDA lose their jobs? Unlikely. These are government employees with, with tenure. What happens to a private company? that screws up, well, they go bankrupt. They fire their employees. Thank you, DDV Show, uh, for the contribution. And yes, please show your support value for value through the Super Chat. Uh, I very much would appreciate that. If you appreciate what I'm doing, if you appreciate what I say, if you appreciate my effort in trying to get these ideas out there. Of course, so insurance companies um, would regulate, would send inspectors, would have the proper incentive. And insurance companies did a bad job of that, would go out of business. Governments don't go out of business, even when they do a terrible job. And, and you think that, you think that contractors and insurance companies have short, uh, uh, you know, time frames that they worry about? That's a joke. The people who really have a short time frame are politicians. Senators maybe have six years. Maybe they start running a year early, so really five years before they have to appease special, you know, the people who vote for them and, and the people who give them money. Con uh, you know, Congress, they only have two years incentives. Mayors have to worry about four years. Most elected officials have the shortest of time spans. They don't think long term. They think short term. Government generally is an institution that thinks short term. Not long term. Okay. Yes, please like the show. Thumbs up if you like the show. Uh, there should be a lot more likes right now than there are. Uh, it helps algorithms. It helps promote the show. So thank you for doing that. Um, so the builder himself, his reputation, his, call it benevolence in some sense, insurance companies, the people who fund the building, the people who buy the condos in the building. Imagine a world in which the government didn't have inspectors. There weren't regulations on building codes. Would people buy willy-nilly these properties without 
having an inspection. I mean, when I, um, when we bought a condo, an inspector went in and, t in, and did a whole massive report about all the different problems with the condo. Now, if the condominium didn't have insurance, if they want government regulations uh, around the, um, the uh, uh, building of the building, then I would have demanded a separate inspector, like a civil engineer, go in and inspect the foundations, inspect the retaining walls, inspect, give an engineering opinion. Or I would demand before I bought the condo that the seller provide me with that or that the seller provide me with what the insurance company had recently done and show me an inspection report. So we as individuals in cases like this, now it is elevated, our responsibility. But we all have a self-interested interest in buying safe places, even poor people. The idea that poor people can't do this, they're too ignorant, they're too stupid, they're too poor. I mean, it's just nonsense. Poor people don't care about their lives. People can't do Google searches. Poor people can't request reports, safety. Poor people today are, are, are suffering because of government regulation of building. Because government regulation of building is so bad today, particularly in places like California, where very little low-income housing is being built. Because it's not worth my building low-income housing. Because the fact is that there's so much regulation on the quality and the type of home to be built, particularly uh, condos, that there is no such thing as low-income housing. Uh, according to the government, government dictates how big the bathrooms will be, how big rooms will be the quality of the materials being used, not just for safety, but for livability or whatever. So that housing for people who can't afford good, you know, high quality housing is unavailable. And what does that lead? That leads to the homeless crisis we have today. The homeless crisis is at least to some extent a consequence of the fact that there is no low income housing being built and there's no low income housing being built partially because of not in my backyard partially because the government won't release land and and and, and allow through zoning for the building of low income housing but also because the building regulations are such that you cannot build low income housing there's no such thing the regulations require you to build middle class housing that's the only thing you can build And that's a big part of the homeless problem. Part of the homeless problem started when in New York City, decades ago, I think this was in the 80s, early 80s, um, they demolished the, 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 those massive, ugly, horrible buildings they had built uh, to house poor people, um, I guess in the 60s, when they, or 50s and 60s, when they were doing a lot of social engineering, and they, and they built these low-income complexes. right? Low-income complexes. And they were horrible and they were condensed. So they, they blew them up and they, you can find videos of this, the, the buildings collapsing and going away. And then they built, and, and they evacuated all the residents and they, I guess they paid them. And then they built these new buildings. And the fact is these residents couldn't afford the new buildings. They couldn't afford the new condos. And they, they built the new buildings to government specs to regulatory specs. And many of those people that were evacuating from those original buildings who couldn't afford the new ones either had to leave New York or become homeless. And that's the beginnings of that homeless problem. So it truly is um, despicable that you know, people advocate for, for, for the government involvement in these things. When the government involvement in these things, government involvement in safety regulation has been, has had very little effect on actual safety. And it has a massive negative effect on poor people and quality, on production, on wealth. So you have the bail bill, 
you have the insurance company, and then you have the bondholder and the bank, and then you have the person who buys the condo. Each one of those has a responsibility. Each one of those, for their own selfish, self-interested reason, is going to monitor the quality of the building. All of those combined going to do a better job than the government. Yeah. Is it going to be perfect? Were well, there never going to be accidents? There's never going to be a building coming down. There'll never be a, a, uh, a homeowners association that procrastinates about fixing something. Well, of course not. Nothing. You know, you can't achieve 100% safety record. If you try, it's absolutely destructive. It'll be so expensive, nobody will be able to live anyway. Accidents will happen. It's sad. It's tragic. It's unfortunate. People who don't, people will die, and they don't deserve to die. And by the way, I never said in the interview that anybody deserved to die. But that's the way the left spins these things. It just shows you how ugly they are. I said that the people who make the decision should be the people who suffer the consequences. And their children, it's, it's tragic and sad, but children suffer the consequences of adult decisions. But I shouldn't be able to, I shouldn't make decisions and then not suffer the consequence. Somebody else suffer the consequence of my decisions, which is what happens with government. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder... Please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now. Uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share. And uh, you can support the show at yourrunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>